You wouldn't believe it, would you? It's yet another glorious day here in Yorkshire. And we've decided to take a trip out to the Leeds and Liverpool Canal. We're not here for a spot of fishing or taking the narrow boat out. We're here to investigate the range we can get on these RF Solutions Ferret wireless receivers. Now we've looked at wireless switching on the channel before, but none that get to the distance we're going to show with these products. So obviously eFix, we have to do these trials. Someone has to do all the hard work. So Rick, I think it's time for you to take a little walk. Well, it's not the gym membership I were expecting. Well, don't mention the perks you get with this job that we fix. Free exercise and fresh air comes with uh, comes with working on the channel. While he's tottering off up to 200 metres so we could check out that range, let's just explain what we've got in the box below us. We've, been, uh, we've brought out the power oak for our power supply. Uh, we've looked at that on the channel before. But we've put the ferret receiver and its power supply in this small waterproof box and hooked it up to the red floodlight so once uh, once rick found out how far away 200 meters is and as you can already see it's it's quite a considerable distance we're going to find out if this actually works obviously with these wireless receivers the great thing about wireless obviously you can obviously it, it saves the wires that's what we're trying to do so it's a great scenario if you have to switch something that's a considerable distance away and think of the amount of cable you could be saving as you do that so i think uh, rick's getting there so let's just uh, let's oh, oh no, i forgot i'm gonna have to take that down to him now i'm gonna have to walk the 200 meters and then come back to see if it works so we've now installed our ferret wireless receiver down the down the canal with rick which is 200 meters away he has measured it just behind the tree and uh, down by the narrow boat there i'll just give him a little flash to see if he's there yes i can see the uh, red light in the distance you know, wireless switching is fantastic. Obviously, if you've got a really difficult switching route, you're possibly on different circuits, even in a different building, that ability to do remote switching with a vast range of receivers is great. Now, with this product, this one here will do 200 meters or up to 200 meters line of sight, which is what we've got here. And this one will do up to an incredible 1,000 meters. So I think now we need to cut back to the workshop and let's take a closer look at the system and how it goes together. Well, Rick, I think we've easily proved that was 200 metres, but you're still flashing. What are you up to? It's the new uh, canal traffic light system. Oh, well, you could have a, a full-time job there. Now, we've done 200 metres, that pretty seamless. What about 1,000 metres? I think that could be your next challenge. Yeah? Well, I'm on my way then. <laughs> I'm not going to make the mistake of leaving the power supply and having to bring it to you, but uh, you give us a ring when you get there. Did we and, not bring uh, a Segway? I'll see you back at the studio. Bye-bye. <laughs> Well, I'm sure Rick will be back with us at some point, but while he's wandering the canal banks, let's have a look at the system we've used there. RF Solutions produce lots of different types of wireless control systems. A lot of them are pre-packaged with enclosures and suitable glanding to get an IP rating. But the one we've used is the Ferret, and that is a small PCB module. Now, the advantage of that is you can sneak it in, as the name suggests, Ferret, into equipment that could benefit from wireless control. So I've mocked up here what you might do if you say had a garden lighting installation and you wanted to control some LEDs. I've got 230 volts AC feeding this LED driver. Output side is 24 volt DC, constant voltage, and we're distributing that via these Wago 221s to some Macau Cobb LED strip that we've seen on the channel before and our ferret wireless receiver. Already prepared this to a number of the control options from RS Solutions. Uh, the mo probably the most familiar one is this light switch version here, which is uh, completely self-contained. So there's the battery in there and the wireless transmitter and it works exactly as you'd expect with a light switch. So switch it on. You can hear the relay click in on the ferret and the LED strip illuminates and then switch off. It goes instantly off. These Fobber remote controls are a good option if you want something on a key ring. And there's a few different modes of operations here. You can get multi-channel versions, but this one here is a momentary action. So I'm gonna press and hold this. You'll hear the relay click in. And as soon as I release that, it will switch off. This version here is set up to latch the relay. So we have on and off control. So again, there's the relay switching on. There's the relay switching off. This trap option, very robust case here is what we had down by the canal. It's got this external antenna that helps increase the range up to that 1000 meters if possible. And this version has been set up again for momentary operation. So press and hold and you can hear the relay engage. And then as soon as I release it, it will switch off. So let's just have a closer look at the wiring of the actual ferret module itself. So just zoom in on the connections. So here's the 
supply from our LED driver. So the negative goes straight out to the LED strip on this side and then also feeds one part of the power supply of the ferret module itself. And a same on the positive. So again, we're feeding the actual um, the board itself, the electronics to uh, obviously make the wireless receiver operate. So this will work between six and 24 volts uh, DC. And then this is our relay end. So again, I'm taking the positive supply into the common terminal of the relay, and then I've connected the uh, output to the LED strip to the normally open side. And obviously when, the, uh, when it receives a signal, the relay engages and, and switches that strip on. So this is set up for low voltage. If I wanted to uh, do mains voltage switching, I'd still power the module itself for its working electronics at a low voltage. And RF Solutions have created this handy little power supply to do that, which takes mains input here, and then it's low voltage output at that side, which would connect into the input terminals here. So that's a great option if you want to switch, say, the primary side of an LED driver. You may have to do that, say, if you were trying to work uh, with constant current LEDs. I think that little ferret PCB is a fantastic solution for garden lighting like we've demonstrated there. Imagine the scenario, you're already building an enclosure to include the LED power supply. You can just put that small ferret PCB in there to add control. In larger gardens, that can significantly simplify your wiring because with that 200 meter range, you don't need to bring all of your wiring back to a central location like you might have to do on multi-channel systems that are out there. You just put it in the control gear enclosure or possibly even in a 13 amp socket feeding a specific area. Using that small power supply, you can turn any socket into a remote switching socket. Now let's next deal with that other issue that comes up we showed you lots of different control solutions there, uh, fobs and conventional light switches, but what if a customer has a very specific type of light switch that they want to use for wireless control, or you're in a scenario where it's very difficult to get new switching circuits installed. I'm now gonna show you a product that can turn any type of light switch into a remote control light switch using this little bogey board here. I don't, know where, I don't know where RF solutions get the naming from, but let's see how you can use the bogey. So I've got a dolly switch here from the Hamilton Perception range. That's a range we've looked at before. So it's very high end, available in all sorts of finishes. But what I've managed to do here is turn it into a wireless remote control switch to operate the ferret. So here we go, just operate like any normal switch. And there we go, the ferrets received the signal and turned the LEDs on and again off again. So flip it over, we'll see here, this will take up to four channels. So I could convert a four gang switch into four gangs of remote wireless switching just with one simple board. It comes in two variants. There is a battery powered version that I've got here, or you can permanently power it from a 12 volt DC supply. Now people sometimes get hung up on, the, on batteries but uh, this will last for eight years based on 100 switching cycles per day, which says that's a, that's a lot of switching your lights on and off, unlikely to be exceeded in most installations. So I think that's a fantastic solution. Again, think of those installations where you do want to match the exact type of light switch that customers have, or you're rewiring a property and it's incredibly difficult to get switching wires to a particular location, or you're in an existing installation and you want to add another switch location. And again, this is compatible with all the other um, devices you see in the range, so you could mix and match and have traditional switches and fobs and some of the other kit from RF Solutions. Pairing the ferret with the various remote control options, it couldn't be simpler. There's a small reed switch on the side of the device which is triggered by a magnet, and that allows you to pair up to 30 transmitters and you can also change the operating mode of the switch as well. You could turn it from a latching relay into a purely momentarily operating relay. Now, we've covered a lot in this video uh, traditional switching, but I think there's some other options for using this control as well. We're about to look at this Millennium Slim, the world's smallest PLC. It's great for sort of energy saving applications, but I'm thinking I'll be able to pair this ferret device with the PLC either to trigger its inputs or to switch from its outputs to trigger remote devices. So that's one of the applications I've found for the ferret. I'd be interested to know what you think. Are you already using these solutions from RF Solutions? Have you used the ferret in an application? We'd love to hear how you're using it and how you found your experience. As ever, put your questions, comments below, and we'll try and get back to as many as we can 
I might even get Rick to do it if he ever shows up again. <laughs>